Hi everybody, Dave Thomas here again with another rocket build. Today I'm going to be building the Alpha 3 by Estes. And this video is going to be a little bit different than most of the, my previous videos in that I am making this while I am teaching rocketry to an actual live class with live students in it. So the, the tone of this video may be a little bit different than my previous ones where I'm essentially interacting with just the camera and by extension, you the viewer. So if this sounds a little bit different tone or uh, some of the interactions seem a little out of place, that's why. All right, so go ahead, open up the instructions there to the front. and use that exploded diagram to check against all of your parts here. All right, so you should have the fin assembly, nose cone, black body tube, and there may be other things inside that body tube, like the engine mount. Okay, um, engine mount's a little white tube here. An elastic shock cord made out of rubber. And then there, in the little parts bag there, you should have a split green ring, an unsplit green ring. These will be the centering rings for the uh, motor mount. And then a really thin white ring. That's a sleeve that just holds the clip in place. And then uh, engine retainer clip. A little tiny screw eye. Make sure you don't lose that. And then the launch lug. And there will be another bag with the parachute in it there. You can leave the parachute in its bag for now. And then a decal sheet that if you don't see it right away might be inside your instruction sheet. So let's skip ahead just a moment here. Get your nose cone and your screw eye. And if you look inside the nose cone there there's a small hole at the top of a cylinder. Just screw that screw eye into there until you can't see threads anymore. Okay, and then when you when it's done, have the um, screw eye running parallel to the outer part here. That way it's less likely to impinge upon the body tube. And then you can just set that aside. I just wanted to do that first so we don't lose the screw eye. Like All right, next you're going to need the motor mount, the smaller white tube here. And if you look on the bottom of the first page of instructions there, we need to make two measurements. Okay, and so what I'm going to do here, just so I don't get my measurements confused, is on one end... I'm just going to write aft, so that will be the rear of the motor mount. And these measurements are all in relation to the aft end. So take your ruler, uh, and one of the things you're going to notice in rocketry is there's always this kind of strange mix between metric and English units, mainly because Americans haven't figured out the metric system yet. Okay, but we need a mark, first of all, at 1 inch or 25 millimeters from the aft end. And then another mark at 2 and a quarter inches or 5.7 centimeters. At the farther mark, that 5.7 centimeter mark that will be toward the, the forward end, take your hobby knife and cut a small slit there, about an eighth of an inch or about three millimeters wide, and your engine clip is going to go into that. So if it doesn't go right in, just widen it out a little bit more. And if you give your knife a little twist there, it'll widen the notch itself. 
and you just pop that in like that. All right, take your white glue here, and you're going to put a bead of glue right around the aft end of this tube. You want a nice even bead, not too sloppy. You can even it out with your finger. Okay, and now take the split centering ring here and that's going to go on flush with the end of the motor mount tube and you want to line the split part up with the engine hook and go ahead and just hold that for two or three minutes here so that it doesn't spring open again now if you have glue that's all squished up in front there, you can just take your finger and smooth that around. This will form a fillet around that ring, make it stronger. Not to mention make it look nicer. Okay, next you need to find the mark that you had made an inch from the aft end, so right here. And you're going to put a bead of glue just ahead of that. And then take the white sleeve here and slide that over until it reaches that mark. And here again you can just wipe off the excess glue. If you want you can put it on the other side of the ring there. This isn't going to be load bearing or force bearing, it just keeps the um, engine clip from sliding around. Okay, now we're going to just let this dry for a little while because we don't want any of these pieces coming out of place. Now, before you set it aside, make sure to go back and check that that green ring is flush with the motor mount back. Okay, so the aft end of the motor mount and that ring should be right next to each other here. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and set that aside somewhere. Okay, so if you go to page two of the instructions, we're going to skip assembling the fin mount for a, the moment since our motor mount is still drying. And go ahead and find the black body tube here. All right, and then you'll need your launch lug. Now the launch lug is just going to go um, anywhere on here at this point, uh, but it has to be flush with the aft end, like we have here. And so just pick a point wherever you want to put this. And I take my um, hobby knife here, and I'm going to scrape the finish in a line where that launch lug is going to go. Just make a couple of scrapes like it. And this is optional. It's not in the instructions. What I'm doing is just making a rough spot and the glue will adhere to that better. All right, now here you want to take a fairly thin bead of glue. Um, more is not better here. And so run your glue along the launch lug Put that onto your body tube where you had the, the area scraped and now pull it back off again. 
so that you leave a film of glue behind on both the body tube and the uh, launch lug. And I'm just I'm gonna let this sit for 60 seconds. And what this is doing is making the um, glue get tackier. So that when we do put it back on, it won't just slide around. It'll actually grab. All right, go ahead and put that back on. And now you just need to straighten it, make sure that it is parallel with the main body tube. Check it from each end as well as from above. That looks pretty good there. And now we can set this aside to dry as well. So this is one of the things, if you're trying to build a rocket in a hurry, you kind of skip around and find out what you can do while glue dries. So we'll go ahead and take the parachute out. And the actual parachute instructions are on page 3. But we're not going to use them quite as published. Okay. So what they show there is taking all of the shroud lines of the parachute and looping them through the screw eye on the nose cone. Which more or less permanently attaches the parachute. Okay. Go ahead and just spread the parachute open like this so the, the colored side is down. and then untangle the loops of shroud lines and then hook them up on your finger like this. So there, there'll be a, there's one that goes right across the middle that should be in the middle of your finger and then the other two should be on either side here. Alright, so I'm going to hook, leave those hooked on one finger. With my other hand I'm going to grab the center of the parachute here and now I'm just going to pull it taut and what I'm looking at are the corners now where the shroud lines attach. Those should all be at about the same level. So all those corners should kind of meet up there. Alright, now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. All right, over here on your finger side, hold on to that and then come over and grab it on the bottom so that you make a loop here. And you want to do this without letting go of the shrouds at any time so you don't change their length. All right, now once you've got that loop, kind of scrunch it down. And now take the snap swivel and you're going to pass this loop of uh, shroud lines through the swivel side eye. So the snap side should be hanging loose here. Once it's through, open up the loops again here and now you're simply going to pass the entire snap swivel through that loop and then tighten the shroud lines back down around the eyelet. Got one there Okay, everybody got it? No? no? Alright. <laughs> Let me come around. Alright, so once you got that on, go ahead and swing it around. Make sure everything's still reasonably the same size. Now, if the shroud lines are where you want them, then take just a little tiny spot of glue and put it on those loops that formed a knot there and just work it in with your finger. And this will just lock it into place so that it doesn't come loose later on. Now the advantage to doing this is one, you can remove your chute really easily. 
so that if you don't want to store your rocket with the parachute attached, you don't have to. Um, if you notice from yesterday, that cadet there, when I took the parachute out, it was all crinkled up and kind of wadded up. It's because it had been sitting there for about six months. Right, but this will normally just clip onto the nose cone like this. And the other thing that the snap swivel does is as the rocket's coming down, the parachute will often spin a little bit. And this happens when you don't have all the shroud lines perfectly aligned, and you rarely do. So as it's spinning with the swivel there, that allows some of that um, tightness of the lines to uh, relax itself, and it keeps your parachute from just winding itself all up as the rocket's coming down. It also lets you trade out shoots. So if you're, you know, if you're launching on a breezier day and maybe you don't want your rocket to be drifting off into the trees, you can pull out the regular chute, replace it with a smaller one, or even a streamer. Okay. So we'll go ahead and set that one aside now. All right, let's come back to the fin mount. All right, by now the glue should be workable. Um, do still be careful with this because it's going, the glue's still soft and we don't want to put any great forces on it. I'm just going to assemble this dry fit to show you what's going to go on first. So this will go into the aft end of the fin assembly and that green ring is going to rest against a little lip that's inside that. So that whole part of the engine assembly should be just below flush with the fin assembly. Um, you'll, you'll also hear this referred to as a fin can, which is actually the, the plastic part here. And then what we'll do with that uh, other green ring is it's going to slide over the motor mount and then it will butt up against the forward end of the fin can like this. Okay, so if this is properly in place, you should have the aft ring just below the level of the fin can there, and the forward ring should be just below the forward edge of the motor mount tube. So you should be able to see just a little bit of white on top there. Okay, if all that is working the way it should, then go ahead and take that ring back off, Put a bead of glue around the tube. And then slide the ring back on. And if you have any um, glue that's kind of squirting over the, the shoulder like this, just wipe that off. Because we don't want any, any glue on the orange part there. Okay, and now go ahead and let this dry by laying it on its side. You don't want it on either end at this point. All right, we're going to take a break from building for about 15 minutes here because all this glue needs to dry before we do anything else. All right, go ahead and get your body tube and your fin assembly now. The glue should be dry enough. And what's going to happen next is the fin assembly here will be inserted into the aft end of the body tube where we have the launch lug. And then you're going to want to have this turned so that the launch lug is in between two of the fins. So go ahead and dry fit that. Make sure there's nothing impinging your processes there. And then go ahead and put a bead of glue on the inside of the body tube. And go ahead and be fairly generous with this one this is going to get squished forward. And what this is actually doing is the glue is going to attach to this forward ring, um, not really to the plastic. So it's that forward ring that's holding everything together. Okay, so I'm just going to slide this in. I'm going to turn it back and forth a couple of times to distribute the glue evenly. And now I'm just going to look down and make sure that I'm in between two fins. Okay. 
Okay, and once that's set in there, um, you can go ahead and just set that aside. Okay, next thing you're going to do is go back to the front page and cut out the shock cord mount. You can just do that with your razor knife here. All right, the first thing to do is go ahead and pre-fold this once you've got it cut out. So take the one and fold it over onto the two. Go ahead and crease that and then take the two, fold it over onto the three, increase that, and then open it back up again. Okay, and then you're going to take your shock cord here and some more glue. So I'm going to orient this so that the widest part is toward me. And now I'm just going to run some glue all the way down. And then use my finger to spread it out so that we have an even film of glue over this entire thing. when the glue dries you want this to be really solid and everything locked into place. So now I'm going to take the shock cord and I'm going to place it down the middle of the two and three and then make it just a little slanted here so that it's just off center when it reaches the top. And the reason why I'm doing this is we're going to fold this so that this part of the shock cord that's on the two um, will come up and lay right next to the shock cord on the three instead of being right on top of it. So now I'm going to take the one, fold it over the shock cord on the two, and go ahead and squeeze that down to get any air out and make good contact. And then I'm going to take the two and fold it onto the three. And here, this is where having it offset helps, is it just keeps it from getting too thick. If you lay the shock cord directly on itself, it's going to be thicker and you have a greater chance of that getting in the way of your parachute. All right, once you've got that, then go ahead and give it kind of a bend here. We want to give it a curvature away from us because this face is going to be glued to the inside of the body tube. All right, now carefully, since you, your glue is probably a little bit wet still on the fin assembly, what we're going to do is stick it down inside the tube here. So if you look at the instructions for this, it's showing that you need to get it down at least an inch and a half. Okay. What I say is get it down as far as your fingers will let you. The farther down it is, the less likely it is to cause your parachute or other recovery system to get hung up. So now I'm going to go ahead and take some more glue and coat the side here that has the um, shock cord sticking out of it. Okay, and here again you want an even coat. You don't want a lot of glue slopping around, but you want glue over everything. Okay, now here's the tricky part. What I'm doing here is I'm just I've got the glue side up. I'm going to gently slide that into the tube without touching the glue to the, the inside yet. I'm just going to slide that down until I get it where I want it. So at least an inch and a half down there. And now I'm going to flip the whole thing over so that now the glue is facing downward. And I can get my finger over the shock cord and then brace the tube with your other hand and press down firmly all around that shock cord mount so that all the glue comes in contact 
with the inside of the tube. Okay, so you shouldn't see a lot of bulging in there. there there'll be a little bit of a bulge where the shock cord is itself. And then if you take your nose cone without the parachute attached to it here, I'm just going to tuck my shock cord down inside for just a moment, being careful not to move the shock cord mount. And now all I'm going to do is make sure that when I put the nose cone on, that it's the shoulder of the nose cone is not hitting the mount down there. And it's not. You'll feel it if it does. Right, so after you test that, go ahead and pull the shock cord back out. So if there's any wet glue, you don't glue it in there. Okay. Once you know that everything is fitting properly, then take the other end of the shock cord and just thread it through the eyelet on the nose cone. And then just tie a double knot into it. Or two half hitches if you're a scout. Okay, once you've got, yeah, what's that? Yep, and so it should look like this. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull from each end to make sure that it's not going anywhere. So as I pulled on the long end here, my knot shifted a little bit, that's fine. I'll pull on the other end. And we just want to get any slack out of that knot. Now you want a little bit of overhang on the free end here, um, but not a lot because you don't want this to get stuck between the uh, body tube and the nose cone. So with the amount I've got on here, I'm just going to cut about half of that off. If you cut it right up against the knot, then if it pulls too hard, it'll untie. We don't want that. And just like we did with the shroud lines, I'm going to put just a little dab of glue on my knot and just work it in. And then once this dries, it's not really structural, it just keeps the rubber from unknotting itself as easily. And that's pretty much it. The, the rocket itself is assembled. Uh, you will need to apply the decals if you like. Alright, so these come in the sheet. Um, they appear to be pre-perforated, so you don't even have to cut them out. Um, you can look on the instructions on the third page. It gives you an idea of where to put them. Um, your kits, I don't think, had the packaging inside it like this, but this is what it looks like. Okay, so you can use the scheme that's shown here. You can use your own. You can not put anything on them. Now one thing we will want to do after the glue is thoroughly dry, and actually mine's pretty close there. So on the launch lug, we want to reinforce that. And we're going to apply another fillet here. So for this, what we're going to do is just run a bead of glue. Ugh, that's really thick. Not that thick. Run a bead of glue along the edge and then take your finger and smooth it in. And then you can take a tissue and wipe off all that excess there. And then do the same thing on the other side, preferably with less glue to start with. Okay, and you'll want to clean up the excess glue really quickly so that it doesn't affect the color of the rocket.
Right, but this will strengthen the, the launch lug. It also decreases some of the air friction, what's called interference drag. All right, and then once you've got your fillets in, go ahead and turn the rocket over so that the launch lug is facing down. And then you can set the forward end of it on top of your nose cone like this. And that will allow it to dry horizontally. Uh, if you were to put this in a vertical position, your fillets will all run down toward gravity. And so you get a thick fillet at one end and a thin end at the other. This way it dries evenly. So James is already applying decals there. I would recommend you wait. We'll put the decals on later. Uh, just because we've got lots of wet glue here and we don't want to mar something. Structurally though, this is done.